And well, the stakes are quite high, both with two losses chasing Santa Barbara in the Big West race. Welcome in to the Mott Athletic Center alongside Harry Kasif. I'm Daniel Gilman. So happy to join you here on this Saturday night. A blackout for the fans here at Mott. And while Harry, with Santa Barbara at 8-0, these two teams playing a little desperate here tonight. Hawaii comes into tonight's match, a five-set thriller last night, Daniel. They're coming in. They will lean on Amber IGD all night long. She does it all for them. Look for her to make an impact, and they are deep at the pins, Daniel. Expect lots of substitutions, lots of opportunities for everyone at the pins. Speaking of subs, we've seen Emmy Bullis as the lone setter. We've seen her in a 6-2 as well with freshman Sam Callahan under Caroline Walters. And a three-set loss to Santa Barbara backed up with the Gauchos dominating late in the fifth set, winning over the Rainbow Wahine with an overturned challenge at 14-all. So how will Robin Amo and her shakeup at the outside hitting position workout here tonight, we will certainly see, Harry, one thing that you look out for in this match is what? One thing I look out for is the depth of Hawaii, Daniel. They go deep at the pins. They will be able to... Daniel, big game for her last night, as well, Kaylin Alexander draws a start on the right side for the Rainbow Wahine tonight. Yeah, both coaches are going to keep us guessing here in this rivalry matchup. A pair of teams very familiar with each other. And yep, you see Kaylin Alexander drawing the start over Kendra Ham, the former Cal Poly Mustang. Alexander went nuclear against Cal Poly with 29 kills in the two matches last season. And you've got Evans behind the all-world middle from Louisiana in Amber IGD. IGD, 71 kills in her career against Cal Poly dating back to 2019, so that is certainly a middle blocker that all teams have thrown two, even three blockers at times up against. And Harry, on the other side, Cal Poly's gonna go with the 5-1 offense. We will not see the freshman setter in Sam Callahan to start. Instead, it'll be Emmy Bullis matched up with the freshman middle in Tess Massengill getting the start as we take a look at it here. Emmy Bullis will run the offense all the way around just like she did last year. Kate Slack, Stockham, Massengill is the difference tonight, but Falcon, Markovska, and Akima, solid all year for the Mustangs. Expect them to bounce back tonight after a rough match at Santa Barbara Thursday. Expect them to come out with some intensity early on. They know they gotta have this match like you said, Daniel. Cal Poly won in four sets here last year on October 15th. Hawaii took it in four sets on November 18th. You might remember that wild second set though here in slow. Hawaii took it 33 31 before Cal Poly finished it off 25-21 and 25-19. Of course, one more thing to mention. How about Hawaii's change in libero in the second set yesterday against Santa Barbara all season long? It had been to Leah Edmonds. Back to last season's libero in the junior from Honolulu in Taylee Ikanaga, who gets the start here once again. She's in the back black bro jersey over to your right alongside Riley Wagner, who has really worked on her defense. And while talking to a couple of the different coaches for Hawaii, defense has carried this Rainbow Wahine team here this year, and they will need to be big tonight against the one-two punch. Tommy Stockham, one of those one-two punchers. The Indiana transfer in her third season in slow gets us started with a float serve, and Hawaii and Cal Poly are underway. And IGD coming off the bench, something to shake up rotations as the back row attack long from Stockham. We get a look quickly at the rotation switch as Kennedy Evans comes out, and IGD, who is averaging a 393 hitting percentage in conference play. Over four kills per set. It is an unbelievable year once again for the fifth year senior. She has been dominating the Big West, Daniel. She's the most versatile player in the conference. She can score on either pin, and she's effective from the service line, and her defense is where it needs to be. And for Hawaii fans that haven't heard the name Lizzie Markovska here this season, surprising that she has led Cal Poly in both kills per set, swings, and kills over 240 kills for the redshirt sophomore from Menifee. She evens us at one as Jolie Akima, a Hawaii native, gets the start at Libero once again, and Amber IGD, who had 16 and 17 kills against Cal Poly last year. We knew she's going to be getting the swings early. Absolutely, Daniel. Great pass there from Ikanaga, able to run their middles. Great job from Kate Lang early on so far. Kaylin Alexander, freshman of the year in the conference, finds the back corner for the ace in Hawaii, who is outserved, especially in the fifth set in Isla Vista yesterday. Gets an early service ace, and it's 3-1 here in the first. Service pressure is going to be one of the key details tonight, Daniel. Cal Poly cannot let Hawaii stay in system. 
Bit of a sophomore slump for Alexander. She went back-to-back -back matches off the bench. Gets the start here today, her 17th start of the year. As a touch by Annabelle Falcon, the left-handed right side. Feeds Markovska, and Cal Poly able to side out here. Pulls back within one in this first set. Hawaii all-time 44-9 and nine against Cal Poly in a rivalry that dates back to the early 80s. Great job there from Lizzie Markovska early on, taking big swings on the out-of-system sets. Cal Poly will not be able to tip and win tonight. They're going to need to be aggressive out-of-system. Ella Scott, the freshman from San Clemente, one of the team's leading ace getters, as IGD creates a tip, and Cal Poly able to carom it over on three. Lang, left side, and the first swing from Paula Gershing. Junior transfer from Germany, who is an all-conference standout at Youngstown State. She gets the start today. Tali Hakas, we may see off the bench later, as Markovska gets this sold-out crowd up and pumping as we even at 3-3. Great rally there from the Mustangs. Emmy Bullis, great touch up on the block, able to transition, get a good set. We saw them set there. Tommy Stockham out of the back row. They were working on that in hitting lines pregame. Expect that a little bit more. They're going to need to throw a lot of different attacks at the Rainbow Wahine tonight. Cal Poly with conference losses to Long Beach State in five on opening night, and then Santa Barbara in three. And early, we are going to see a line judge that has been ridiculed throughout the conference and once again makes a controversial call on that back line. And unfortunately, and I won't say his name, he has been challenged upon many a time here in Mott this season. And so that controversial call goes Hawaii's way, and Paula Gershing will serve. Targeting Stockham, which is something that we're going to see a lot, right? A lot of teams will target Tommy Stockham as the tip falls. And the reason is why. Why do you want to target some of the team's hottest getters? Tommy Stockham is by far the biggest hitter for the Mustangs. She's coming off a season where she was one of the leaders for the Mustangs. She's going to be put to the task tonight. She's going to have to pass really extremely well for the Mustangs to stay in system. They, The Hawaii Rainbow Wahine want to get her tired, make her touch the ball a lot, make it hard for her to make good plays up at the net. First swing from Riley Wagner is handled by Akimi. Jole Akima transfer from Boise State is Igidi found by Scott and a one-touch dump. Handled by Igidi and she just powers it through the defense. And so with Cal Poly's move to a 5-1, you want to see the setters dumping a little bit more. Maybe that's something Kate Lang should try to do a little bit here tonight as well. Last year, Daniel, we saw Kate Lang and Emmy Bullis go back and forth with the dumps. Something to note on those dumps, Daniel, put it away from the libero. Akima and Ikanaga do a great job picking those up. Put it in front of right back defense there. Worser defender on that side of the court. IGD creates a left-handed swing from Stockham, and Tommy did all she could to avoid a net violation. And it's an oopsie left-handed kill from Stockham to even us at five. It's important to get IGD off that service line, isn't it? 14 aces this year, plus any time where Amber IGD's on the bench, the opponents are happy. Absolutely, Daniel. Last year, she was all over the place on defense, let alone her serve. Great defender in the back row for the Rainbow Wahine. Plus rotations here for the Mustangs with IGD on the bench. Sophomore DS, London Haberfield, right into the net. Haberfield, who didn't see any playing time through the first two months of the season, has come off the bench here in the past few matches. Quickly, she'll sub out as Jole Akima from Kahalu has emphasized that playing against Hawaii needs her best match. She feels it a little differently when facing the Rainbow Wahine. As Tess Massingill's first swing is blocked, handled left side. Stockham with enough power to find outside of that line, and Cal Poly will take a key side out there after the service error and bring rotation one back in as Emmy Bullis is set to serve. Redshirt sophomore from Wisconsin who dethroned the all-conference setter Avalon Denekashe last season. Has had to battle with the freshman setter Sam Callahan. And an ace for Bullis. Emmy Bullis' 21st ace of the year gives Cal Poly an early lead at 7-6. Bullis as the 5-1 setter plays with lots of confidence, Daniel. She's going to run the show tonight, especially when she can find success from the service line and dumping the ball. It even grows her confidence even more. Expect her to be aggressive tonight. Great crowd here tonight. It has been a disappointing season of crowds here at Mott. They have fallen beneath Long Beach State, third in the conference in average attendance. But tonight, the fans showed out in a blackout with, we got to get a look soon at the, the swim team in their... Uh, their usual speedo attire as Cal Poly quickly able to take advantage of an Evans hitting error. Runs on a 3-0 run here in this first set. 
Mustangs 5-2, Hawaii 5-2, chasing the 8-0 Santa Barbara Gauchos. Alexander rips one, but Akima is there. Back row attack, Markovska into the tape. Certainly be interesting to see because you feel like three conference losses is probably a little bit out of the range of a comeback. So this feels like a match in must-win territory for one team that wants to try to battle for the number one seed in the conference tournament, which is new this season. Especially this early on in the season, Daniel. A little bit less than halfway through conference play. Both teams are going to be wanting, needing this win tonight. And a massive roof, our first block from either side. Has Hawaii back even at eight all as the senior from Dublin, Ohio, Captain Riley Wagner is set to serve. Mustangs have been seeking some sort of middle two help and today it's Tess Massingale coming off a one kill performance against Santa Barbara. Right side to Thalkin, that's picked up on one from Ikanaga. Back to Thalkin. Alexander, might this be the match that reignites Kalen Alexander's season? Last night, or last year I should say, Daniel, Alexander torched the Mustang defense. She was on fire. Great out of system set there from Lang and Alexander. Both teams so far very aggressive out of system. It's going to make it so both teams are going to have to cover their hitters hitting that aggressively. But so far, just one block so far on both sides, Daniel. Cal Poly finished last year with six conference losses. Hawaii won the Big West at 19-1 and, and took care of the Mustangs in late November behind Kalen Alexander, hitting over 400 in a four-set win on November 18th. In system, give and go with Stockham and Bullis, and it's blocked, and Gershing can gush about that one. 10-8 Hawaii, and as we dive a little bit deeper into the junior from Schwalbach, Germany, Gershing's numbers at Youngston State are unbelievable, Harry. Averaged over five kills per set with a career high of 35 kills, and she can block. Gershing is a solid player all the way around for the Rainbow Wahine. Last night, she had a terrific match. Unfortunately for them, in the loss, expect her to come back tonight hungry for the win. Oh, an awkward second touch that gives Cal Poly a free ball here at 10-8, and Massengale mistimes it and then jumps into the net. Awkward exchange to give Hawaii an 11-8 lead. And for those that didn't quite follow last night's match, we'll give you a bit of a recap when we come back as Cal Poly calls tonight's first time out. We'll take a break here at 11-8 in the first set. Level. The Big West. Only the bold. Nothing screams college athletics like a group of student athletes in Speedos. Welcome back to the Mott Athletic Center. Daniel Gilman, Harry Kasev, so happy to be with you here on this Saturday night. And Harry, Hawaii just one attack error here through the first 19 points. Cal Poly with five, and that has certainly separated them on this 5-0 Rainbow Wahine run. Expect the Mustangs to amp up the service pressure as the set and the night goes on, Daniel. They want to take Hawaii out of system as much as possible, make it really hard on their hitters to swing out of system. Four kills for Lizzie Markovska to lead the way. IGD with two. And there's not a pin hitter for Hawaii that has more than one. In system, Stockholm, and the error fest finally comes to a close on that 5-0 run. And Harry, despite Kate Lang and her career high 22 digs last night, there were certainly a couple opportunities to take advantage of right back defense for Santa Barbara. Coach Amo last night goes to the 6-2 at some points in the match making it easy on Kate Lang, just playing in the back row. Expect Kate Lang to come out here, play really low to the ground on defense, able to get a lot of those tips and shots up. Speaking of a variety of shots, Gershing's hitting cone, certainly an impressive one. And Paula Gershing, after not eclipsing the 10 kill mark in any match this season, picked up 16 kills with just one error on 41 swings yesterday earning her the start here tonight at left side as a tight second touch creates a free ball for the visitors and IGD goes straight down as we revisit a big matchup, right? Hawaii at five and one, Santa Barbara at seven and zero last night. The Gauchos took the first set, Hawaii evened it, they went back and forth. Santa Barbara took the third, Hawaii took the fourth behind a late Gershing run. And then the fifth set began and as Thalkin takes a swing here, down by four. 
It's gonna be the IGD show. That one looked down, but it's called up on the pancake block from Bullis. We'll see if this might be challenged. It won't need to be. Gershing spurts out three straight kills, and it's 14-9 Hawaii. And while Harry, there was a little bit of controversy yesterday in the fifth set. Hawaii trailed 5-3, tried to challenge a Tasia Farmer kill that seemingly bounced back off of the Santa Barbara outside hitter, but the challenge system was down as Cal Poly brings in Amy Hyatt to fill in for Tess Massengale in the middle. Then at 8-4, the power goes out inside the Thunderdome. It comes back. At 9-6, they say the challenge system is working. And then at 14-13, down match point, Hawaii ties it seemingly. But Santa Barbara wins the challenge, wins the match 15-13, and now takes a decisive two-game lead in the Big West Conference. Great cover by Wagner on the Gershon swing. Back to IGD and she's blocked. And Cal Poly does what they haven't done all night, a block and against IGD. Great job there from Kate Slack. Assistant coach Addy Pika wanting Tess Massengale, all the middles, Amy Hyatt, Kate Slack, really emphasize that right hand on the block on the left side of the court, really reach into that seam, make it so take away a lot of space that the Hawaii hitters have to hit into. Gershing's first error. As she goes around the antenna, they're on the near side, and it's 14-12. Mustangs with a pivotal run here after the service error from Ikanaga. Akima's service run continues. IGD gets it down in front of Markovska, and there is not a bigger size discrepancy in the conference than when Amber IGD goes up, and especially with Ofebu gone out of the, uh, the Irvine middle. IGD just does a great job making herself available anywhere on the court. We've seen her pull off the net, dig balls that are tipped. Yeah, out of rotation. Regardless, it was a service error long, but that'll certainly frustrate the Hawaii coaching staff. Not IG a call you see often. Serving out of rotation. The It was a footfall, Daniel. Oh, was it? I believe so, yeah. The <laughs> up ref mentioned or pointed to the line, and line ref was also on top of that one, Daniel. Well, there you go. You don't see that often either. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Kershing, left side to Markovska. Wow. Paula swings from left to right. She shows versatility from both sides, and this is certainly going to be a dangerous pin hitter for the next two seasons out on the island as Hawaii takes a 16-13 lead. So far, Alexander and Gershing, lots of success on the right pin so far, hitting into the angle. We could see there Coach Walters kind of emphasizing her blocker there, Lizzie Markovska, just take a little bit more of the angle, leave the line open for Akima to dig that. Once again, Cal Poly with no answer, and this time it's Riley Wagner from the outside. A four-point edge for Hawaii in this first set. Cal Poly will make a trip out to Hawaii on November 3rd. And an important back-to-back -back for the Rainbow Wahine as this serve tails wide. It's Cal Poly on November 3rd, Santa Barbara on November 4th. That might help decide the Big West Conference race with Long Beach also sitting at five and two. That was pretty close. I almost thought that ball was in. It looked like <laughs> the line official hesitated for a second. It looked like Coach Amo might challenge, but we play on. You know, when you have that, on the outside, you just don't need a challenge at this point in a set. And of course, with only two challenges for either side, you need to win that first one as we get one more look. Great job on the pass there. In system, perfect ball there. Kate Lang can't ask for a better pass there. Perfect one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Riley Wagner. She's gonna win that battle about nine times out of 10. Stockham tips in front of a diving Alexander and Tommy Stockham with four kills. Three errors, even with Markovska's four, and Haberfield checks in to serve. And well, I mentioned it was a sellout. Of course, the fans that you're seeing are a lot of the, the Hawaii crowd. On the other side, I don't see an open seat in this Mott Athletic Center. Behind us, a little bit of an opening, so maybe not a true sellout here tonight. Wagner smokes it by Haberfield and right back defense. Back to back balls there. Kate Lang in perfect system. Going to her big hitter, Riley Wagner, on the left. She's got the matchup right now against Emmy Bullis. Expect them to feed that constantly. Take advantage of the mismatch on the left right now. 
Lang will serve with her robotic looking leg, leg sleeve. Oh, that looked like a clear double. No call. And a tip to perfection. Wagner really struggled here in slow last season. There you go back to the two matches for Riley Wagner. 9-12-42 in the loss to Cal Poly. She bounced back, had five kills with three errors in the win at home as the Mustangs use a timeout. And we are going to try to show as many students as possible. Good to have school back in session. I think one of our uh, last broadcasts was like right before the band got moving and, and this place was a little bit quiet, but there is not many better atmospheres in California than here in Mott when the place is packed like this. The difference between Mott Athletic Center before classes start and after classes start, Daniel, is night and day. The band is in here. We got a packed house in here tonight. Before classes started, we saw the tournament with Washington St. Mary's Pepperdine. Not that many people in attendance. Much better attendance now. Much better atmosphere. Just like last year, Daniel, I expect tonight to be electric. We might be in for a very long match tonight, Daniel, just like Hawaii had last night. Cal Poly has liked going the distance. They went five against Washington, lost to the Huskies, went five and reverse swept St. Mary's just to do the same against UC Irvine, UC San Diego. It was a reverse sweep fest to start the year. Five set loss against Long Beach State as well as the Mustangs sit five and two in five setters this year. Meanwhile, Hawaii two and two in five setters. It has not been the most highly decorated of non-conference seasons for Robin Amo. Wins against USD who have fallen from grace after their final four run. Couple wins against USC, Florida State, Pepperdine. So zero ranked wins this year for Hawaii with losses to Oregon, TCU, UCLA, and Liberty, as well as Long Beach and UC Santa Barbara. Looking for a touch, not getting one as Stockholm swing hits the assistant referee down in the corner and Hawaii takes a six point edge. I like Stockholm staying aggressive here early on, even though the Mustangs are down in this first set. Her and Markovska are gonna need to get only more aggressive as the match goes on. Just missed that one. Short serve from Lang, targeting Scott. It's back to Stockholm and she will reset on that same cross court seam shot in front of Gershon. Right now, Daniel, the difference has been the passing game. Kate Lang in system almost on every ball so far. Emmy Bullis just not in system as, as often. But we saw right there, Emmy Bullis in system right there. Great set, Tommy Stockham going up against a split block, able to find the seam. Serve from Bullis at 21-16. One of the more unique stats you will ever see as the balanced attack from Hawaii continues. Three different Rainbow Wahine, including Wagner, have four or more kills. Cal Poly only has kills from two players. It's only Markovska and Stockham, not a kill from anyone else. Like we talked about before the match, Daniel, the depth of Hawaii is for real. They go deep, especially on the pin. We've seen Wagner, Grushing, and Alexander hit on the left and right, and we haven't even seen anyone come off the bench yet. Expect Hawaii to dominate at the pins. Hawaii, Cal Poly's rather, left side block is gonna need to improve, really read the ball out of the setter's hands. A remarkable 39 points, and the Mustangs don't have a kill from their middle or right side as Gershing swings to the left, and again successful. Five kills, one error for Paula Gershing. Five kills, zero errors for Riley Wagner, and a 4-1-8 start for IGD. It is a clinic offensively hitting 407 as Ikanaga serves. Markovska gets it down in front of IGD, and Cal Poly tries to keep a heartbeat, but they'll need quite a Herculean comeback here in this first set down five. We've seen the resiliency from the Mustangs all season, Daniel. They are never out of the match until it's over in that third or fourth or fifth set. Expect them to come back in this second set a lot more focused, a lot more dialed in on the left side block. Alexander, who draws the start at right side. We were expecting to see the Cal Poly transfer in Kendra Ham, But Ham, after hitting negative last night, sitting on the bench, as well as the freshman from Israel, Tali Hakas. Could potentially see one of them as a DS as the match continues. Six set points for Hawaii. And a scrambling serve received sets things up for IGD. And she closes it out. 
three different Rainbow Wahine with five kills in a first set featuring a 460 hitting percentage as Hawaii takes it 25-18. We'll take a break. Come on back with the second. Here from San Luis Obispo on a gorgeous Saturday night. Welcome back to this broadcast brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. To learn more about the healthcare services, visit dignityhealth.org slash Central Coast. And Harry, as dominant of a first set offensively as you will see with a 467 hitting percentage, just one service ace, but four service errors, two to one blocks. It was a, uh, a Hawaii showcase with a 73% side out mark. All three pin hitters for the Rainbow Wahine hitting above 500 right now. I don't know if I've ever heard that through a first set. Expect them to keep it everything consistent, constant, the same. Expect Cal Poly to up the service pressure, really try to pull Hawaii out of system here, make it hard on them to swing in system. Expect the Mustangs to focus up on their block as well, Daniel. Just one block for the Mustangs, two for the Wahine, but 20 points earned out of the 25 for the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine, only 12 points earned for the Mustangs, Daniel. Still an unbelievable stat line. Cal Poly, only two players with a kill. 5-1-9 for Markovska, 5-4-11 for Stockholm. Massengill took three swings before being pulled for Hyatt. She hasn't taken a cut. Falcon 0-0-3. Kate Slack only has one swing. The Mustangs really don't get going without their middles, as do most teams. Yeah, Daniel, not the best passing set for the Mustangs. You expect them to really focus in on that first contact. Something I expect early on here, Annabelle Falcon has played solid volleyball on the right side for the Mustangs all year long. Expect them to make it a point of emphasis to get her involved early and often. Three swings for her in that first set. Nine swings for Lizzie Markovska. 11 swings for Stockham. Expect Bullets to try to spread it out a little bit more as much as she can. So the team switch sides. And once again, Evans will start with the rotation of Wagner at the service line. Evans 0-1-2 in that first set as the second middle. Of course, replacing Tiffany Westerberg, who graduated last season. Chance for Alexander to get the set started, and it's off the dome of Thalkin for a 1-0 Rainbow Wahine lead. Hawaii keeping up their service pressure, able to bring the Mustangs way out of system on the first point of this second set. Jolea Akima, great job communicating here, trying to establish a presence in the back row right now. Markovska's pass tight to the net, and there's the first middle kill of the night as Amy Hyatt goes straight down to even us at one. If you're just joining us, our first set was pretty tight through the first 15 points. Hawaii went on a key run, took it handedly 25-18. A system to Alexander, who's cut shot, creates an overpass, and Gershing says, thank you very much for kill number six. Both teams are so far trying to get the off blocker involved on defense, trying to pull him out of system. Great job there from Alexander. Doesn't attack that ball super hard with a lot of pace behind it. Just puts it right, on, right in Annabelle Falcon's lap. Falcon again, and it sails long as Hawaii takes a 3-1 lead. The Rainbow Wahine will travel to Davis on Tuesday. So I wonder if they'll stay here on the mainland. It's a six o'clock Pacific time start. And then Riverside at home Saturday night. Good swing from Markovska and Hawaii's lead cut to one as Kate Slack checks into the middle for Cal Poly. The Mustangs travel down to Northridge on Thursday and then out to Bakersfield for a Saturday afternoon matchup before the road trip continues at Fullerton and Irvine. So a four match road stretch after tonight is IGD, if you don't put a blocker on her, you could pretty much give up the point. IGD's hard to block because she's got great range, Daniel. She can hit the cutback, she can hit the thumb down shot. It's gonna be really hard for the Mustangs to slow her down. An interesting stat, Daniel. 10 swings early on for Amber Igidi. The Mustangs have only been able to set all of their middles five times early on. So Amber Igidi is leaving her presence so far tonight, Daniel. And Falcon delivers her first kill of the evening. 
on a touch call as Ellis Scott will check in and serve. Scott, all league outside hitter in high school at San Clemente, transferred over to being a libero as a senior. Now filed into that DS spot and getting some help from her front line to keep a service rotation in as Markovska and Slack pick up Cal Poly's second block of the night. Great serve there from Scott, pushing that pass all the way into area four. Good set from Lang there, but Markovska knows she's, her only responsibility is IGD on the slide. Kate Slack joins her up at the net for a good block. Tied at four, and again it's IGD who misses wide. Kate IGD, excuse me, Amber IGD from Kate Lang there. IGD hitting 398, 393 in conference play, good for second in the Big West, but that is now her third attack error. Fireball serve creates a tip shot into the donut picked up by Akima. Kept inside the candy cane from Markovska. Back row attack, Alexander with whipping topspin. Alexander very tight to that 10 foot line. Evens it at five. Really tight there, Daniel, but Coach Walters saw it and deciding not to challenge. Great rally there, great touch up at the net from Bullis. Mustangs have come out in this second set a little bit more on fire, willing to rally, keep the rally alive to win the points. Kirshing with the serve, set left side, Markovska with a cannon and that quick trigger. Impressive, the progression we've seen from Markovska, who is a little bit more of a defensive specialist outside hitter to start. She's worked so much on that game as an attacking threat. Now leads the team fifth in the conference in kills per set. Good serve there from Markovska as well. A key dig by Scott. Pancakes are out here on this Saturday night. IGD wide. Hawaii's players begging for a challenge, but Coach Amo says, nope, that was wide. And Cal Poly with their largest lead of the night at 7-5. Lizzie Markovska early on tonight, really doing a good job stabilizing everything for the Mustangs right now. Good serves, hitting 500 right now as well for the Mustangs. Really good impact from her. Slack blocked and she regathers. Wearing a cast on her left hand, unable to get up for the quick trigger of IGD. Amber IGD, Big West Player of the Year, All-America third teamer, the first Hawaii All-American since 2017. IGD does a great job there with her eye work, pulling off the net, passes the roll shot from Markovska and transitions right into the back one. Big kill. Add a system on the IGD serve as Hawaii looks to even it up here in set two. Evans still seeking her first kill. Wagner blocked, IGD can't make the wild attempt to pop it over and the Mustangs pick up their second block of the set as Haberfield checks in to serve. Big block there from Bullis. Like I mentioned early, earlier, Daniel, the more she touches the ball on the block, the dumps, the aces, the more confident she will get as the match goes on. We know the Mustangs in general will get better as the match goes on. Hawaii coming off a marathon five set match. They might get a little tired and worse as the match goes on. Everything will balance out tonight, Daniel. Haberfield, good deep serve. Alexander with a matrix defensive move by Markovska to avoid it. And it is now five attack errors this set from Hawaii. They only had three in the first. Kate Lang there advocating for a challenge from Coach Amo. Amo real confident right now in her team, thinking let's just side out real quick, get Haberfield off the line. Wagner with some help from the tape. Great dig, leads to a Stockham tip. Hawaii desperate for a side out. They've looked out of sorts in this rotation. And a block from Bullis. A solo stuff and she's pumped up. Bullis is coming alive here in this second set, forcing a timeout from Coach Amo. Real solid play here from the Mustangs in the first 16 points, Daniel. Three blocks in the set takes us into our first timeout. Mustangs leading by four. 
Mustangs have flipped the script here in this second set. Cal Poly out hitting Hawaii 250 to negative 053. And well, Harry, as we take a look at Coach Walter sitting right in front of us here, you have to think about how to try to take advantage of moments where Aichidi is not on the floor. What's the simplest way to try to equalize that solution? Sustained service pressure from the Mustangs will keep Aichidi on the bench longer than she needs to be there. IGD 15 swings so far. Kennedy Evans, the second middle for Hawaii, just three swings. Kate Lang not as comfortable setting Evans as she is. IGD. Wow, one-handed punch dig by Scott. She's got a big smile on her face, but Markovska can't deliver from the back row. And Hawaii, who is siding out at just 45% this set, gets a key one out of the timeout to pull back within three. Now, over the past two seasons, I have believed that Kate Lang, the junior now, from Keller, Texas has been a top 10 setter in the country. Certainly underrated, back-to-back -back first team, all Big West setter. This year, her numbers have dipped a bit. The assist per sets are there. The digs per set have doubled. Last season, just one. Now over two digs per set. 20 assists for Lang early on as well. We're not even yep. halfway through this second set. She's doing a great job facilitating the offense right now. Dipping serve right on cue. Continue to be impressed by number 10 in white. The one thing I would like to see a little bit more, and I've talked to different volleyball minds around the conference, and if Lang adds an attacking element to her game, of course, playing in a 5-1 offense with just 19 kills through 18 matches, one kill per match, not quite keeping the defense guessing for a chance to dump. Area to grow in that department for sure, Daniel. Kate Lang doing a great job. She's very cool, calm, and collected. Very upright, not very up and down as a setter. Great job leading her Hawaii offense so far tonight. Amy Hyatt starting to heat up two kills in this set as Cal Poly sides out to run into rotation one. A designed blackout throughout the campus here tonight as the Mustangs wear black and their fans do as well. Evans in the middle. Stockham. What a dig by Gershing. Tommy again. And there's a net violation. It's Tommy Stockham whose follow through hits the net. And Hawaii, despite trailing 10 6, have run out three out of the last four. Great response from Hawaii coming out of that timeout. Wagner back to serve. Excellent job so far from her tonight. Service error for Hawaii. That's service error number five for the Rainbow Wahine. First of the set. We mentioned it at the top of the show. These two teams, two matches behind UC Santa Barbara. They will each face them one more time. Cal Poly at home on Halloween. Hawaii against the Gauchos on November 4th. Good dig by Lang, creates right side action for Alexander, who dots the corner to perfection. That's a precision swing from great, the sophomore out of Georgia. Great swing there from Alexander into the deep cross court corner. Emmy Bullis and Tommy Stockham both look at each other like the ball's gonna go way out and it lands perfectly in the corner. Falcon, sharp angle, splits the blockers of IGD and Alexander. And the Mustangs are just trying to keep up pace here in the second set, siding out at over 75%. One expect, more look. expect more of that from Bullis. Great set there. IGD is not up on the block. Annabelle Falcon does a great job ripping that into the angle. The Mustangs have done a great job challenging the defense of Kate Lang. What a cover by Wagner on the block. And then a joust that goes wide, called out of bounds off of Falcon. So IGD's hustle earns Hawaii a point. Look at this net cam view. Both players go up for it, and it's just going to go off of Falcon last. A play that could be challenged, but very hard to see which player hit it last. Funny enough, you always say to win a joust, you want to be the player that touches it second. You don't quite think about it going out of bounds as this serve sails long. Now Lascott's service rotation files, and that's what happens when you can side out efficiently. You get quick serving rotations going and your best server can get back on the line. Everyone stays a little bit more in rhythm too, Daniel. 
Emmy Bullis is going to be able to find her hitters more. The Mustangs have done great playing a lot more out of the back row offensively. Bullis with two blocks this set into the front row, and they target the left side in Markovska defensively as Alexander picks up her sixth kill. Hawaii. Great match so far from Alexander hitting over 500 on the right side. We saw her play on the left side against Pauly last year. Expect Kate Lang to stay connected with Kaylin Alexander often tonight as the match goes on. A block that is kept alive, but a sheepish smile from Brian Brink as he calls the lift on the Mustangs. Back to Alexander, though. She didn't start against Irvine or Santa Barbara. Did come off the bench against the Anteaters. Played just one set last night in Isla Vista. She has just one match with over 20 kills, and that had nine errors in it. As the Mustangs scramble and get it over on three. Everyone trying to get back into place. Dumped by Bullis, popped back over on one by Slack. IGD wants it right back, instead it's Alexander, and a long point goes to Cal Pauly to get him to 15 first. As these long rallies go on, Daniel, Kate Lang is gonna be forced to go to Alexander on the D ball in the back row. Expect the Mustangs to do a really good job judging whether how in system, how in rhythm Alexander is going into those approaches, maybe just staying down as Alexander has aired a few times now in the back row. IGD with a huge cover, but it's over the net for Slack. And that's what Kate Lang wants to call. Did she go over the plane? And you mentioned it, Lang has been begging for a challenge to be used this set, but Coach Up. Amo instead is gonna try to reason with our down judge, Tom Ulibera. Up ref, Brian Brink there, gestures that the ball is on top of the net, not a challengeable play. Smart play from Kate Slang, Slack, dump, dunking that ball down. Markovska to serve, nine points away from evening this match. Another overpass, but Slack loses the joust to Lang. Hold on. Our up judge is going to come talk to Kate Lang. Maybe something about conversations after every point. Regardless, it is Hawaii's point. Little stare down through the net there from Kate Lang. Yep. Goes to show how much this match means to Hawaii. A loss would certainly be crippling to their postseason hopes, but there is a Big West tournament for the first time ever. Wow, stock him out of a cannon. Igidi with the dig. Tommy again. A tip. And terrific Tommy has Cal Poly fans on their feet, 17-14. And Haberfield in to serve. Through the first set and a half, Daniel, we've seen the Mustangs are going to make right back play defense all night long. Alexander and Lang have been challenged tonight. Alexander with three digs early on, Kate Lang with four, but it's the balls that they're not getting up, resulting in poly points. That are the, that's the difference in this second set. Riley Wagner able to beat the block for the kill. Wagner had five kills in that first set. That was her first kill here in the second frame as Hawaii pulls back within two and Lang to serve in rotation one. Evans back in, and this is the point scoring rotations for Cal Poly when IGD's on the bench. Great dig from Gershing. And Evans is finally able to shake the zero off her stat line. Great job there from Evans. Amy Hyatt ready for that quick set there. She's up at the net. But Evans does a great job there just swiping it into right in front of right back defense there. Ten aces this season for Lang. Alexander palms it straight down off the block of Hyatt. We're even. Coach Amo doing a great job right now, strategic wise, having Riley Wagner hit on the right, on the serve right now. Alexander playing her natural position on the left. Alexander playing a fantastic match right now. Expect Amo to cater the offense and the team to what they're naturally doing. Great job so far. Cal Poly point. That one called in the entire Hawaii bench this time, begging for a challenge. Alexander like told Coach Amo that that ball was in. Coach Amo not 
not in a hurry to challenge here. She knows <laughs> it'll be a long match. She knows that as the sets go on, we get into the fourth and fifth set, the challenges are super valuable. Especially after getting the short end of the stick last night. And the loss to Santa Barbara in five. What a block by Hyatt, an even better cover by Evans. And there, a double is called. The first double against Hawaii gives Cal Poly a 19-17 edge in this pivotal second set after Hawaii took the first 25-18. Cal Poly able to surpass that point total. And Bullis to serve. Wagner. Off pace from Stockham. Lang again gets away with what looked to be a double. The entire Cal Poly bench up in arms. Lang even grimaced after, but it won't matter. The Mustangs get to 20. We talk about the resiliency of the Mustangs as a respect to the whole match, but what about in the same point right there? All six players, Coach Walters singing that ball's a double. Brian Brink letting them play tonight. Coach Pika gets a, a, a warning from our up judge at her reaction from that double no call. This is fun. It's emotional. This is a rivalry. It's what it's all about. Coach Pika involved in her first Cal Poly Hawaii matchup. The former standout All-American with San Diego as Evans able to split the block. And now Coach, uh, Coach Pika and, and Coach... Baxter on both sides, they're getting into it. The assistant coaches, Brian Brink, our up judge has worn both sides, it's hilarious. Brian Brink really letting them play so far today, yes, Daniel, multiple is. times I thought he was gonna <laughs> call a double. But we play on tonight. Service error number seven for the Rainbow Wahine and Cal Poly sits four points away from this second set. And what's important about those seven service errors, Daniel, is that Cal Poly only has one and that's Big difference in tonight's match. Leaves room for Cal Poly to up their service pressure even more. Mustangs alums having some fun as well in the first row. Malkowska blocked. Smashed over on three. Add a system to Alexander. She gets a reset. Bullis with a wild dig. Evans just taps it to herself there. Dalkin beats Ikanaga, 22-18. Timeout, Hawaii. They use their second and final here in this second set. And Harry, it feels very even. Cal Poly's just been able to win some of these marathon points. Long rallies have gone the way of the Cal Poly Mustangs in this second set. Great job. The resiliency in the point, Daniel, really good. All three back row defenders for the Mustangs playing really all out defense, keeping the ball off the ground. And who knows, once you get that first contact up, the second contact hasn't been called very tight tonight. Whatever you gotta do to put the ball at a pin and get someone an out of system swing, Daniel, whatever it takes tonight. We've seen both assistant coaches on either side go at it. Both teams view this game as must win. We will see both teams go at it very late into the night here in San Luis Obispo. Great crowd, hopefully those kids have had enough sugar to keep them up late. Already nearing the eight o'clock hour out here on the West Coast. So happy that you're with us here on ESPN Plus. As always, you can rewind if you're joining us and miss the first set, you can always go back and watch it. Able to fast forward through commercials here on the ESPN Plus platform. And while you have you here, who do you think is going to be our Pacific Eye player of the game? Go ahead and submit your votes on Twitter. Tweeting at Cal Poly Volleyball, Hawaii Volleyball. Since 2008, Pacific Eye has delivered the highest quality eye care on the Central Coast. With locations in Paso, Slo, Pismo, Santa Maria, and Lompoc. Including Lasix, Retina Care, Cataract, and Glaucoma Care. Glasses and contacts, cornea transplants. Schedule an appointment today at Pacific Eye see us to see better. Mustangs need three points before Hawaii can get seven. And a serve that didn't quite stand a chance there gives the Mustangs a little bit less breathing room up by three. Rotates Amber Igidi onto the court as well. That's probably the bigger problem right now. 
Amy Hyatt has quietly come into tonight's match. Only three swings hitting 667, but she pitches in a block and a dig too, Daniel. Great impact from her. Markowska blocked, covered by Akima. IGD once again. Eight kills now for Amber IGD to lead all players tonight. Amber IGD able to dig that ball, set it nice right to Cade Lang, able to transition herself, work her way around her for the set and the kill, targeting Emmy Bullis that time. Picked up off the floor from Akima. It's called up on the serve, and the Mustang's able to withstand the initial attack. Markovska tools the block. That is a momentum shifting point. Inches, centimeters away from an ace. And we might finally get that first challenge. Asking if the serve was down and Coach Amo will smile and... Ask for the... Looks like the challenge is gonna be for in or out. Tough to see from our angle, Daniel. That one happened on the far side of the court here, but we should get a good replay of this one. All Hawaii's players, including Amber Igd, the most prominent, very passionate about that one being blocked in. Would certainly be a big swing. I thought the serve might have fallen in front of Akima's diving pass. Let's take a look at the replay here as Tom Ulibarri reviews, and so this block not sure that, that can't be the review. They might be calling the ball down, challenging the from ball the down serve. on the serve. Yeah, it has to be from the serve. From the serve? From the serve, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be from the serve. One of two challenges Available to each coach. If you win the challenge, you get it back, and you get an extra one in the fifth set. It's a quick review, in fact. Here we go. There's a look at the serve. Ooh. Live action, I thought it was down. And after review, the ball was down, and Hawaii wins the challenge. And they'll pull within one here late in the second set. Coach Amo retains her first challenge. Coach Walters here with both timeouts. Possibly an opportune time for a timeout here. Really make Ikanaga wait to serve. Perry. That was a pro call. A little Tony Romo action here from my partner courtside. So a timeout is called from Cal Poly. Ikanaga entering this match. Had only played 31 sets this season. For Taylor Ikanaga, the junior out of Honolulu. Zero aces, one service error. She played all five sets last night, took the libero jersey from Talia Edmonds, who we haven't seen yet, the Michigan State transfer, who was the libero for the majority of this season. Ikanaga did pick up a season high 17 digs in yesterday's long, long match with UC Santa Barbara. We had some Big West matches going on right now, including another five and two team in Long Beach State. Long Beach State in a duel with Riverside as the beach just finished up their second set at 25-17. 25-17 in the first set as well. So Long Beach looks well on their way to a 6-2 start to the conference. Davis and UC San Diego as well in action as Davis leads the Tritons two sets to none. So we're back from the break. Coach Amo, who spent five years as the assistant coach for Hawaii, who set for Hawaii in the mid-90s, set for the U.S. national team three times, including a silver medal in the 08 Olympics. Driving the train that is back-to-back -back conference championships. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back if you go before COVID as well. Great touch there by Alexander, 22-21. Such a pivotal point here in the second set. Markovska erupts 
the Mott Athletic Center. Every ball there goes to Lizzie Markovska. Great job. She's working hard tonight, transitioning off the net multiple times. Great up there from Annabelle Falcon getting in defensively. As the match goes on, though, Bullis will have to spread it out a little bit, get the middle bit, get the middle somewhat involved, but Falcon definitely needs to get more involved on the right. One bro serves the other, and then a big dig from Akima on Alexander. Right back to Kaylin, the sophomore. Handled by Bullis. The fans are on their toes, and now they're on their feet. On a misjudged, miscommunicated defense, Cal Poly has three set points. IGD has been taking all of those free balls that come over the net. IGD on that one just expects someone else to go for it, and she looks disgusted. Expect Hawaii to come back here in system, go to IGD. And on cue, Amber IGD has her ninth kill, but four errors. Not quite the hitting percentage that most are used to seeing from this all-world middle. She is all business right now. She knows Hawaii needs these next two points. Kate Lang in the front row. Bullis has been in perfect system going to Markovska. Alexander to serve. She targets Markovska. Falcon. And it's down. Cal Pauly takes the second set on an Annabelle Falcon kill. Her fifth of the set and the Mustangs even us into the intermission. Lock in. This one may be going late. We'll be right back with the third set between Cal Poly and Hawaii. ...withstands a late run from Hawaii and a second set where the Mustangs side out at over 60%, holding Hawaii to a hitting percentage of under 150 alongside Harry Case, if I'm Daniel Gilman, great seeing all of the parents repping their children's numbers here. It's family weekend, it's alumni weekend for the Mustangs. We got some dancers in the crowd as well here at the Mott Athletic Center. Lots of students in attendance tonight, Daniel. Big time matchup. This is the place to be in Cal Poly Athletics on a Saturday night this week. In that second set though, Daniel, we saw both teams come back to the middle ground a little bit. Hawaii kind of dominated the first set. Cal Poly withstands it, shows their resi resiliency, comes back in that second set, brings Amber Igedi's hitting percentage down to 238. That's the key right there. Hawaii wants to run her more than anyone else. She's got 21 swings on the night. That's four more than the next person for Hawaii. Expect the Mustangs here to come out. They gotta be focused. They cannot give away a third set like they did at Long Beach 25-9. They gotta be dialed in here on the first contact. Really make it easy for Emmy Bullis. We saw her in perfect system a lot of times with Lizzie Markovska down the stretch on the left pin. Expect that to continue. IGD goes 4-3-12 in that second set. Just one kill on 10 swings from Riley Wagner. Five kills from Kaylin Alexander as she steps up. Just two from Gershing. Meanwhile, two kills from Stockholm, only three from Markovska, but a big set from the Southpaw on the right side who finished the set. Annabelle Thalken, who missed all of last season with ankle surgery, and the redshirt sophomore happy to get back into this rivalry matchup. Annabelle Thalken, solid night so far. 444, four digs to go along with it. Only nine attempts, though, compared to 21 for Markovska, 24 for Tommy Stockham. Expect Emmy Bullis here to find her opposite hitter, Annabelle Falcon, early and often here. Annabelle Falcon has played tremendous when given the opportunities. Expect the opportunities to only go up from here, Daniel. And we'll certainly be hawk-eyed to try to keep an eye on that Hawaii bench to see if any changes will be made. You mentioned the deep bench. We haven't seen the defensive specialist slash libero in Talia Edmonds. We haven't seen the freshman from Israel and Tali Hakus. We haven't seen the senior transfer from SLO who's gotten all the starts here in the past few weeks in Kendra Ham. And here to start the third set, the Rainbow Wahine will roll with the seven and now six that they did to start the match with Gershing, Wagner, Lang, Alexander, and Evans along with Ikanaga. And after one rotation, dangerous IGD will come in on the other side. Tommy Stockham is red as a Christmas ornament. This place is not cold. It is toasty in here tonight. And Stockham Lee always leaves it out on the floor as she serves to start the third. And Evans airmails the swing to give Cal Poly a 1-0 edge. 
Great pass there from R Riley Wagner early on here. Fantastic serve from Tommy Stockham. Coach Walters in the locker room in the intermission. I guarantee they need the service pressure to go up during this match, not down. And there's a sharp serve. Angled beautifully by Evans. For the first time tonight, Cal Poly had a 1-0 lead. And now Hawaii able to even it here in this third set. Last year, both matches went four. Hawaii was able to sweep both matches in 2021. They split, winning at home in 22. Gershing. Wow, what a reaction save there by Ikanaga. But it will not be sent over on three by Wagner as Cal Poly with a big block takes a two on edge. Amy Hyatt leaving her impact, making her presence known on the court. Great, great routes there from the Mustangs, putting her on the back one with Annabelle Falcon on the red fastball on the right pin. They're making it hard on the Hawaii block. IGD. I wouldn't be surprised if Amber IGD goes nuclear here over the next few sets. Amber IGD during the intermission, I guarantee, demanding the ball. She knows she can pass it. She can attack it as well. She's going to want to do it all for the Rainbow Wahine tonight. She knows she needs to play at her best for them to be successful. IGD with two matches over 20 kills, both against lesser opponents, Liberty and Western Carolina, as Gershing able to beat the block with a touch. Career high of 24 for those curious for Amber IGD. She has 10 here at the moment in early moments of set three. Expect Markovska to come back more aggressive here, really challenge the block of Kate Lang here. Strong serve from Alexander. Shank pass saved by Markovska and not just saved, passed beautifully by Lizzie for her assist. Dime set there from Lizzie Markovska, pin to pin there. She looked like she threw on the setter's hat there <laughs> for a point. Emmy Bullis now into the front row, Scott to serve. Let's see if the Mustangs here have found an answer from IGD from the attack line. Now Cal Poly has used the 6-2 offense in so many matches this year, including the loss against Santa Barbara on Thursday. Back to the 5-1 today as IGD, again, kill, and then she throws her hands up, says, come on, let's just keep it business-like, let's just win with ease. Because for IGD, they're playing at a different speed. I mean, it's it really looks like she is playing at a slower speed than everyone else. The a, game just comes so easy. A different speed and a different height, Daniel. She's up above the Cal Poly block. Not much the Cal Poly block can do if the set is where IGD needs it, where she's reaching up with that right arm, contacting it at her highest point. Markovska, though, gets a key kill. Evens us at four here early moments of set three. Great job siding out here from the Mustangs here. One more side out puts IGD on the service line. There's the side out. Evans pushes to the front row. Kennedy Evans, the junior from British Columbia. Matched her career high with 13 kills yesterday in the five set loss at UCSB. Good touch up at the net by Wagner. Again, it goes back and forth with her and Bullis. Big block. Evans and Lang stuff Stockham. Fourth block of the night for Hawaii. Great block there from Evans. We haven't seen that from her so far tonight, but she gets way over the net, presses into the seam, and she's right on time there. Big roof from Kennedy Evans. IGD Alexander and Lang have that leg sleeve on. It is certainly a stylish look. Back row, Markovska covered by Akima. Stockham whips it. What a dig by Alexander. Direction to Wagner who hits it into the net. And another long point goes to the hosts. Great job, great rally on both sides. We saw Kaylin Alexander there out of middle back playing opposite, all out defense, one-handed dig save. She's putting her it all on the line tonight. As we get a little sweat mopped up off the floor. Very even third set though, Daniel, early on. We go back and forth, similar to the th second set as London Haberfield, the server specialist, on to serve. In fact, both sides hitting 125 in this third set. Haberfield, who had three aces here against Hawaii last year. 
Creates a free ball. Ooh, looking for a, a pickleball style dink there, but Hyatt unable to get it over. And Cal Poly has shaken things up. Ellis Scott has stayed out as that extra DS in the back row. Now Akima comes back in for Haberfield, but the defense for the Mustangs, this is the rotation they want in that back row with Markovska. Essentially three DSs with an attacking threat in Lizzie as she passes a good serve from Lang. Hyatt takes advantage of that middle back defense. I love that decision there from Emmy Bullis. The miss set there, miss contact from Hyatt on the previous one goes right back to her. That's a great decision there from Bullis to get her middle Hyatt going early on in this third set. Bullis, 23 assists, five digs, two blocks and an ace. Nearly a second ace. It stays inside the antenna. And Thalkin makes it an afterthought into left back. Great job there on the set. Emmy Bullis comes off the serve. Great serve. Runs that ball down, sets it against the grain. Annabelle Thalkin just gets enough on it to put it down in front of Ikanaga. Mustangs used a key service run with IGD on the bench last set. Thalkin blocked on the line. That's a massive side out. And Edmonds will come in for the first time tonight. Talia Edmonds, who had nine aces last year. Transfer from Michigan State. We get one look from our net cam as Bullis can't pick up on that block. Just a DS here for Wagner in the back row. Played all five sets last night. It might take another five sets tonight for Hawaii to win this one or either way. Talia Edmonds comes in as a DS. Stockham gets the key side out. Shakes Edmonds off that line. Wagner will quickly get back in. Another great set there from Emmy Bullis contacting that above the net. Really making Kennedy Evans work with her eyes real well. Stay disciplined, stay down on the ground. Letting Tommy Stockham get a full swing on that one. Two attacking threats in the back row. Good touch by Alexander. You've got Stockham back there for Cal Poly. Wagner on the other side as Alexander picks up the dig. Hyatt beats the block of Evans on a one-on-one. -on -one. We came into tonight's match, Daniel, praising the depth of Hawaii, but so far it's been Cal Poly going deep on the DS. Ellis Scott playing good ball. London Haberfield as the serving specialist, but Amy Hyatt has been the X factor coming in for Tess Massengale, playing tremendous in the middle so far. Gershing has struggled since the first set and hits this right into the big black jersey block, and the Mustangs take a two-point edge. Great block there from Falcon. Great eye work. She's tracking the ball. Goes up with both hands straight down. Big block from Annabelle Falcon, making a big difference right now. Massive serve from Stockham. Falcon goes over the plane to put it down, and she knew it immediately. And it was right in front of Brian Brink, the referee. Brian Brink hesitant to call his whistle tonight, but he's on top of that one. That ball's on completely the side of Hawaii. Easy call for him right in front of him. 10-9 Mustangs here in the third set. Tied at a set apiece. And we are tied at 10 points apiece. Fourth ace for Hawaii, and Aichidi doing jumping jacks to try to pump up her crowd. Amber Aichidi willing to do whatever it takes to win the ultimate competitor right now for Hawaii as they look to take a two sets to one advantage. Ikanaga targets Stockham. It is set over the net and then hit into the net and a net violation. Hold on a second. No, they're going to give Bullis a back row attack as her set went over the net. So before the Hawaii net violation, Cal Poly called for an infraction and Bullis and Walters are frustrated. So since Bullis contacted that one above the tape on yep. the set, it'll count as a back row attack. Yep. Hawaii the next player to touch it. That's why the back row attack is called on Bullis there, even though Hawaii knowingly into the net. Coach Walters at DS at Santa Clara. Just verifies those facts. 
Gets the explanation, and Hawaii takes a one-point lead. On target, Aichidi handled by Bullis. They'll go right back to her. Oh my goodness, like a preloaded pistol. Timeout for Cal Poly, and we will take a look at that kill when we come back. Take a break as Hawaii spurts out two straight, takes a 12-10 lead on a 3-0 run. Mustangs and Rainbow Wahine, it is the 55th all-time matchup in Harry. Walk us through this demanding of the ball from IGD. Ember IGD gets dug on the first one, but the tempo is even heightened and quickened on the second one. Kate Lang and Amber IGD on the same page tonight. The connection between them is the difference in the match right now. Amber IGD, a game wrecker, Daniel, for the for Hawaii, I should say. IGD 12 kills. Three already in this set. Falcon wide, and Hawaii takes a three-point lead. The Mustangs scraped even with a 25-22 second set, but Hawaii in the midst of a 4-0 scoring run. The list goes back to Falcon, and again, Perry, the decision from the play caller to go back to the player who just made the mistake. Great decision, another one by Bullis. That's how you instill the utmost confidence in your hitters. Annabelle Falcon knows she only plays in the front row. She wants every opportunity she can get, and so far Bullis is giving her just that. IGD on a tip, just gets over slack, but Kate gets enough of a touch on it for IGD's 13th kill. Just 15 kills last night in five sets for IGD. That's an uncharacteristic three kills per set. She usually is closer to four. And a good serve from Alexander. It's slack. Aichidi doing it all. Wow. Hawaii on the ball. Hawaii with momentum. And a 15-11 lead on Alexander's service run as Aichidi killing on all cylinders. IGD is so good, sometimes the ball just tends to find her and it's right where she wants it, able to kill that overpass. That's Wagner's fourth dig. A slide to IGD. And Markovska hits the line and Hawaii wants the challenge. <laughs> there have been a few of those calls, haven't there been? Coach Amo very, very reluctant almost to challenge some of these because she knows down the stretch there's going to be missed calls. There's going to be <laughs> plays you need to challenge. In the middle of the set, not as much. We need an Amo cam. We really do. <laughs> Great facial expressions from the sixth year head coach as Gershing misses long and Cal Poly's comeback efforts have pulled him back within two. Ellis Scott here on the service line. Five digs playing in the back row for Falcon tonight. Let's see if she can amp up the service pressure. In system from Wagner, back row to Alexander, and it's another dime swing. Kaylin Alexander, eight kills, hitting 300 tonight, and it's a three-point edge. Alexander has been the most versatile player so far besides IGD. She's gotten kills out of four different positions, left front, right front, right back, and now middle back. Alexander playing a great all-around match. Oh, IGD on the tip. Says not today. Block number one for Amber IGD. She has 79 blocks on the season. That's her first tonight. IGD just does a great job hanging at the net, not letting that ball come on the Hawaii side. Rainbow Wahine hoping to put an exclamation point on this mid-set run. Wow, a bullet from Alexander. And it's a back row beauty, 18-13. Timeout, Cal Poly. If you're Cal Poly here, Daniel, all you gotta do is just 
take away some of the momentum right now from Hawaii. Going to be hard to get this third set back on track, but into the fourth set, we've seen Cal Poly go back and forth with some of the best teams in the conference. Expect the Cal Poly Mustangs here to come out of this timeout much more focused, hoping that they can gain the momentum back going into the fourth set. The fourth set is going to be crucial here. That will be the match decider. Hawaii number one in the conference in assists, kills per set, opponent hitting percentage, and digs per set. And as we stand, a pretty even stat line, six blocks apiece. Hawaii with eight more kills, certainly stretching out that hitting percentage disparity at 258 to 161. But just three more digs than the Mustangs here tonight. It was, it was always gonna be up to the digs. Cal Poly number one in the conference in opponent digs. Hawaii number one in the conference in digs during conference play. Right now, the Mustangs able to limit the amount of defense that can turn into offense. But it's so quickly that this Lady Bow team can spurt out runs as they lead by five. Great job from Hawaii so far, playing all out defense across the back line. Really disciplined at the net as well. Holding Cal Poly to 038, hitting just a 47% side out rate for the Mustangs this set. 64% for Hawaii. Coming out of the timeout, Gershing finds Stockholm. And that right back defense, Gershing. Looked like she saw a ghost on that swing from Lizzie. When Kate Lang is up at the net on the block, expect Stockham and Markovska to aim more for the line and the seam as opposed to the angle where Amber Igidi will be camped out. Overpass, wow, what a touch by Lang. Tip shot beauty. And I was just about to say, it almost feels like when Cal Poly goes to the left side offense, Hawaii is okay giving them the line swing. They're just playing the tip, and that's why Gershing was so up on that last one. Yeah, Daniel, great observation there. Gershing does a great job anticipating that tip there from Stockham. Kate Lang, a great touch up at the net as well. 19-14 on IGD serve as Alexander pops it over on one. Slack to the corner, and that's just a hat tip of a swing as Kate Slack has her second kill. Super smart swing there from Kate Slack. Expect her to get more involved here as we go into the end of this third set and even into the beginning of the fourth set. She's going to need to get and receive a few more sets if Cal Poly wants to come back in this match. Quick side out as Hawaii takes a 2015 lead. Stockham on that tip shot down the line creates maybe the first net violation against Hawaii tonight at least as far as I can recall, and it's 2016. Hawaii has been ultra disciplined up at the net. Daniel doing a great job here. Alexander on the left, Wagner on the right. We've seen they are interchangeable. Good dig by Markovska. Just her third. Akima's been all over the place. 11 digs now for Joe Lay. Another one of those long rallies. Will go a long way to whoever can come out on top here, and it's the defense. Falcon and Hyatt give Cal Poly a momentum point down three. We've seen that when you remove Amber Igidi from the court, it's pin to pin, not a lot of balls in the middle for Hawaii. Amy Hyatt and Kate Slack have done a great job anticipating left or right which way the ball's going. Amy Hyatt and Falcon combine on the big block there for the Mustangs. Teardrop serve a little short, 21-17. Meanwhile, Long Beach State sweeps Riverside, so the beach moved to six and two. Will be tied in second place with the victor here tonight behind eight and no Santa Barbara. 
Serve is going long. Service error is a bit contagious. Big rotation here for the Mustangs. Kennedy Evans about to rotate off the court. IGD will come in. We'll see if Tommy Stockham can piece together a few points here. Serve off the tape, handled by Wagner. Kalpali with just one ace tonight. As Markovska goes down the line, but serve receive was something that Hawaii was struggling with yesterday. Nine aces from Santa Barbara. The serve received tonight has been on point from Wagner and company. Hawaii has been solid on the first contact. That's what the most important contact is, that first one. That enables you to do so much more with the second and third ones. Great job here from Stockham targeting Wagner. Wagner has been playing all out, playing really hard alongside Gershing as the outside hitters. Wagner now moved almost all the way to the sideline. Crunch time here in a set that might carry as much weight as it can. As a swing from Gershing pulls Hawaii three points away and brings IGD in for a potential strong finish to this third set. Ikanaga. Bump set from Bullis on point to Markovska. 13 kills for Lizzie Markovska to lead Cal Poly. And a, a bunch of those kills, Daniel, have been way out of system as we just saw there. Emmy Bullis, great job. 20, 30, 20, 25 feet off the net, just puts it high and inside. Markovska, super aggressive, blasted it off the block and out of bounds. In system to Alexander. She splits the block and it's 23-20. Kate Slack just a tad late there, closing the block. Left the seam there for Alexander. As she goes back to serve, Kate Lang rotates into the front court. With IGD and Gershing. Alexander will find Stockham in system from Tommy. Markovska beats the block of IGD and Cal Poly hanging on by a fingertip. Down two. And Ellis Scott will come in to serve, and if the Mustangs ever needed a service run, this is the player they want on the line. Expect, Seven aces in Big West play. Expect a tough serve here. Daniel tried to pull Hawaii out of system, not let Amber IGD touch the ball. And it's a serve that pulls everything out of system. 24-21 Hawaii. And Gershing to serve. Amo talking to Evans on the sideline. Another bump to Markovska who has to give a bit of a short roll free ball. IGD hangs with the left hand and tips for the set winning kill. Hawaii 25, Cal Poly 21 as IGD's 15 kills lead all scorers here tonight and will switch sides as Hawaii looks to end it in four and the Mustangs just won another marathon. We'll be back to find out what happens. Volleyball brought to you by Dignity Health, run by French Hospital alongside Harry Kasif. I'm Daniel Gilman. Just such a fun one every time that Hawaii comes to slow. It always seems to bring the best out of this crowd, the student section. And we'll see if the Mustangs have a little bit of vigor in them here into this fourth set. Harry, break me down some of the stats in that third that stood out to you. Hawaii is siding out at an insane rate tonight, Daniel. 68% just in that third set. Cal Poly not terrible, but at 58%. Right now, the game is super tight, Daniel. Not much disparity going on as we saw in that first set. Expect Cal Poly to come out here laser focused. They need this set more than Hawaii does at this point. Expect Hawaii to keep the ball rolling. Keep Amber IGD going. IGD's got a match leading 28 attempt, or not match leading, but for Hawaii match leading 28 attempts. She's got 15 kills on those, hitting 393 out of the middle. Great match from her so far. She will do whatever it takes to win this match. It's up to the Mustangs to not let her be able to impact this match, make her sit on the sideline more, serve a little tougher, not let the setter Kate Lang find her in system as often as she has. Both setters though, Daniel. Kate Lang, 38 assists, 35 for Emmy Bullets. Both setters running the 5-1 efficiently tonight. Both setters doing a great job leading their teams. The last time the Big West Conference was won 
by a team not in this match was in 2014 when Long Beach State won the conference. That may happen this year, but the winner tonight will certainly still have an outside chance just two matches back with about a month to play. Hawaii knows this is a must-win match to try to keep those four-peat hopes alive in the Big West Conference. Of course, this year it matters a little less without the automatic bid in the regular season as a double from Bullis starts the fourth set. And a poor note for Cal Poly. Big West Tournament in Long Beach, Thanksgiving week. That's where the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament will come from. And I know I will be excited to be watching on ESPN+. Wagner serve in system to Hyatt, and there was a sellout there on Stockholm. Hyatt found the clearance aisle. Hyatt doing a great job tonight, making herself available there. The pass pushed into area four. Hyatt runs the back one. Kennedy Evans not where she needs to be there to put up a good block. Amy Hyatt comes into the night's match and plays lights out so far for the Mustangs. Another great pass from Wagner. She has been lethal. In serve receive as Gershing misses long, begs for a touch, and we'll see the second challenge tonight. One of those Amo challenges that... We're gonna see a touch challenge here on the net. So let's take a look at our net cam on a touch challenge from Coach Amo. She's one for one already tonight, so still has those two challenges left. All right, let's take a look, Harry, and you can help me decide. All right, we might have to slow that one down. Here we go. Looks like maybe the right hand of Hyatt. Ball was probably gonna go out anyways. It's tough. Always tough to overturn a touch call. Down judge today is Tom Uliberry. He is taking another look at it. Whoever wins this challenge will have a 2-1 lead in this set. This felt like a challenge that Coach Amo needed to make because her entire team wanted her to. We have seen the entire team advocate for a challenge earlier tonight, and Almo has kept Shru the challenge it card. Off. Yeah, shrugged it off. There's a look at Almo talking to Kaleo Baxter in his fifth season. And so this call is going to stand, Terry. Cal Poly wins the point. And Coach Amo, for the rest of this set, will have just one challenge. She'll get one more in the fifth. Coach Amo having a chat with Tom Eula Berry. She's gotten very close to him over the last 27 hours. <laughs> he was the down judge last night in all the controversy in Isla Vista. Well, that'll get the crowd going again as Hyatt touched that one for sure and blocks it straight down. Amy Hyatt there, her fifth combined block on the night. Great job from Amy Hyatt and Annabelle Falcon combining on that one. As we see them press over the net, combined great block there from the Mustangs. Service error takes a little bit of air out of the balloon as Amy Hyatt, red shirt junior out of Auburn, Started just five matches last year on the pins. She made the move to middle. Coach Walter said it was an easy transition for her to just focus on a little bit less. Of course, Cal Poly needed the size up there with the graduation of Meredith Phillips, who's in attendance tonight. Another key dig from Akima. Oh, Hyatt on the way up for the overpass. Hits the net and just show frustration as Hawaii evens it at three. No need to challenge that one, Daniel. That one was pretty <laughs> obvious. Amy Hyatt knew her herself, but she's got to come back here. If I'm Emmy Bolas in perfect system here, I'm finding Amy Hyatt 
who's been the X factor for the Mustangs tonight. Hyatt with five kills. Instead, it's Markovska off the head of IGD and found by Gershing. Falcon down the line, one-handed dig by Ikanaga. Then poked out by IGD. Long points favor Cal Poly with a little bit of tired legs on the Hawaii side after a lengthy five-set thriller last night, an hour and a half south. Kate Slack now in the game. She needs to get a bit more touches attacking-wise. That swing is long. Lang does anything she could to keep it from going over. But the attack error is starting to pile up. Hawaii now has more attack errors than Cal Poly. They're hitting negative 800 this set. It's pretty good. IGD's fifth error on the night as well, Daniel. 0-4-6 this set for Hawaii. Tight to the net, joust won by Markovska. Gershing flat-footed finds the court for Hawaii's first kill of the fourth. Somehow able to sneak that through the block of Slack and Falcon there. Smart swing there from Gershing. Expect that to continue here. Kate Lang in good rhythm here to the left pin in, in the front row as well now, Daniel. Alexander into the net. 6-4 Cal Poly as Ella Scott's service run comes. And Mustangs trying to force their eighth, fifth set match of the season. They're five and two, while Hawaii sits two and two in five setters. Good pass from Gershing. Slide comes for IGD. It has felt like the slides have been less effective for Amber. As Stockham misses wide, Hawaii able to pull back within one. Have you seen that IGD off of two feet compared to off of one feet? I agree, Daniel. IGD on the left side, Markovska and Stockham have been a bit more successful, slowing her down, not stopping her, just slowing her down. Then Slack and Hyatt have been in the middle. IGD, when she's in system in the middle, she's almost unstoppable. Dumped by Bullis. Who else but IGD gets a touch? Pancake save by Scott. And then Markovska with a little bit too much mustard. And we're tied at six. Despite a... 1-4-10 set from Hawaii. It's even at six in this set. Cal Poly with just one kill as well. Cal Poly getting the middle back attack involved tonight a lot more than we've seen in the past. I like it, Daniel. Even if it hasn't resulted in kills, it keeps the blockers on Hawaii just a bit more stuck where they are instead of being able to get out to the pins. Markovska misses wide. She has two of her four attack errors on consecutive swings. Both teams sitting negative in this sloppy fourth set. Hawaii will take it if it means they can go home. Finishing this in four would certainly behoove the visitors and their stress levels watching at home. Wagner through the block. It's been a quiet Second, third, and now fourth set for Riley Wagner. That's her third kill since a five kill first. Fans trying to urge these six student athletes on the court for Cal Poly. As Paula Gershing, who is the Horizon League Player of the Year, All-American last season. What a swing that was, and a key side out. It gets to a point where Amber IGD's presence is being felt even when she's not getting blocks. We saw there two of Markovska's four errors on the night coming, trying to swing line, avoiding IGD. That time Markovska challenges the block of IGD. That's what Stockham needs to do now that she's transitioned into the front row. Lizzie Markovska to serve. She has eight Big West aces, second to just Stockham on the team in conference play. Slack misses wide, and the attack errors piling up. Nine attack errors and four kills total in this set between the two teams. Slack there just a bit in front of the ball. Can't get a good contact out in front of her. Puts that ball a little bit wide here. Let's see if Bullis continues to do what she's done all night. Go back to her hitter after a block or an error. In system to Slack, and she's stuffed by Evans. 
Kennedy Evans, her fifth block of the night, and it's 10-7 leading into Cal Poly's timeout. How about this? We haven't reached the media timeout in any set as the coaches have taken time early in all four. We'll take time with them. 10-7 Hawaii here in this fourth. You're watching Big West Volleyball on ESPN Plus, where the Big West Conference lives as Hawaii took the first set easily, dropped the second to a late charge from Cal Poly, regained balance in a pivotal tight third set, and here we sit in the fourth area, 10-7 Hawaii. Aijidi not on the floor, and yet the Rainbow Wahine have been able to stretch their or tight lead. Six errors so far in this set, four Six errors for the Mustangs, I should say four for Hawaii, leading to both teams hitting in the negatives early on here. I should have said IGD not in the front row as her service run comes to a mild close. And IGD will come out for Ikenaga, slack out for Haberfield. And so with the change from the 6-2 to the 5-1, Cal Poly has a little bit more freedom. They don't have to serve slack, hence last year's libero challenger in Haberfield. Oh, that's a set to no one that will fall out of bounds and pull the Mustangs back within one. That's how quick things can change out of a timeout, a service error, a missed set. That was a good pass too, Daniel, in perfect system. Kennedy Evans just not in the spot. Kate Lang thought she would be here as Haberfield continues her service run. London, his older sister Layla graduated last season in Haberfield who had three aces against Hawaii last year, picks up her first of the season. Last year, Haberfield was the one who ended the match for the Mustangs at the service line. She might be Hawaii's kryptonite on the Cal Poly side. Tied at 15, excuse me, tied at 10, first to 15 now. We'll win this one as Haberfield lets it go and it whips into the corner. What a swing from Alexander. She's the freshman of the year in the conference for a reason. Alexander, a cool double-double, ki 11 kills, I should say, 10 digs. She's doing it all. She's killed the ball from four positions, like I've said, really making it hard on the Cal Poly block to stop her. Lang, just over the tape. Oh, right into our kitchen comes Akima. And it's an ace for Kate Lang. That's her second of the night and Hawaii's sixth. System from Scott. Stockham has been quiet since helping Cal Poly win the second set. Now Tommy Stockham has 10 kills. Great swing there from Tommy Stockham, just going right off the high hands there. Very hard attack to stop from Hawaii. Rolls in to Emmy Bullis's serve. There have not been many missed first touches from Hawaii, but there have been a few missed third touches as that attack error totals 22 for the visiting Rainbow Wahine and it's 12 all. Another good pass. Alexander misses long. Oh, it's called in. Tight swing leads to Kaitlyn Alexander's 12th kill. Great swing there from Alexander, way deep into the court. Very hard to dig that ball as well as to block it. Expect Kaitlyn to find Kaitlyn Alexander as long as IGD is on the bench. Alexander has been solid all around tonight. Coming all the way from left to right, Thalkin fires up Bullis. And it's 13 all. In system right side, Alexander overpassed by Bullis, blocked by Thalkin. Fantastic read there from Thalkin, not trying to hit the ball or joust it, just lets the ball onto the other side of the court. 
and waits patiently before just going up over the net and blocking Gershing. But Cal Poly's eighth service error evens it at 14. Ikanaga. 28 digs in 2021 against Cal Poly, only eight in the two matches last year. What a firecracker swing dug by Akima, then blocked! It's Gershing and Igedi to silence the crowd. Lizzie Markovska there with the out of system swing, really hard there. Just swinging a little bit too low, got to swing a little deeper into the court there. Out of system, Gershing and Igedi camped out. Deep float, handled in system. Markovska misses wide, and it's 16 14 Hawaii. In this fourth set, it was tight through the first 20 points, tied at 10, tied again at 12, again at 13 and 14, but now Hawaii on a 3-0 run, and the Mustangs will have to use their final timeout early at 17-14 in this fourth set, and Harry, when you are clicking like Hawaii is in terms of momentum, are you thinking of scheming in a different way to finish the set? Yeah, Daniel, Hawaii is just trying to get themselves across the finish line. Something they couldn't do last night, losing in five to Santa Barbara. But tonight, they look a lot more connected out on the court. Coach Amo has not gone to her bench as nearly as often as she did last night. Expect Hawaii here to really just be disciplined. They know if they play their style of ball for the last 10 to 20 points, they should come out on top. It's on the Cal Poly Mustangs to switch something up here, change the tide, as you could say, and figure something out here to score 11 points before Hawaii scores eight. A great near capacity crowd here at Mott. The Mustangs will be back at home next Saturday at two o'clock against Cal State Bakersfield. Unfortunately, we will not be on the airwaves for that one, so you'll have to follow it either in person or on the stats through Twitter or gopoly.com. ESPN Plus broadcast will be back on Halloween night as the Gauchos for another rivalry matchup come to slow. That could be a huge match deciding the seeding for this Big West tournament later on in November. A game where probably athletes aren't trying to play on Halloween, but that game will be of the utmost importance for both sides. I remember there was a Halloween match was it two seasons ago. In system to Markovska, she's blocked again. 10 blocks even for Hawaii, including three in the last five points. Something to notice, Daniel, as this third set has gone on, the passes have not been getting up to the net for Cal Poly. Makes it a lot easier on IGD to decide going left or right here to the pins as we get a good pass there. Hyatt, but there's a good block touch leading to an IGD kill. 16 now for Amber IGD, matching her total here in slow last season. IGD here, like I've said, Daniel, has just started to demand the ball. She's getting a good touch up at the, at the net, transitioning the pass is right where it needs to be for Lang to find her big hitter. 19-14 as Ikanaga's serve kisses the tape. Pounced over on three. Free ball, IGD wanting a touch. Not getting it as the swing is long. 19-15. 19-15's the score. Pauly looking for major comeback here against all odds. Gershing was on fire in the first set. She's cooled down a bit, but that is kill number 11 for the German transfer from Youngstown State. Gershing super calm, collected all night long here as her performance dipped down a little bit into that second and third set. She's coming back here in the fourth set. She could be the reason why 
Hawaii wins this fourth set. Oh, Markovska misses on the swing and things are unraveling for the host Mustangs. 21-15 in Cal Poly out of timeouts. And you know, we're gonna go ahead and call our shot here as our Pacific Eye player of the game is Amber Igedi. She's kept her eye on the ball both offensively and defensively with seven digs, four blocks and 16 kills. As Thalkin says, hold on a minute, we're not quit. Quitting quite yet. And for a moment there was a, a pause. Hawaii's going to challenge this swing and it is their final challenge of the set. Calling an in or out challenge on the swing from Thalkin right in front of their bench too, Harry. What'd you see? It looked like there was a little bit of action up at the net as well. But Coach Amo along with her entire coaching staff, assistant coach Baxter and Castello, very adamant about that one being out of bounds. Annabelle Falcon there just turns that one a bit aggressively down the line. One more look. Here's the net cam. This won't quite help us on the in or out call, but. Look like Falcon might have ran into the net as well on that one. Yeah, let's see if we can slow this view down. Looks in. Looks like good call there. Yeah. By the line ref, we haven't seen an abundance of those from him over the season, but <laughs> might have gotten that one right. And so if Amo loses this challenge, she will be out of challenges for the remainder of this set. Of course, Hawaii may have six wins and one loss if the challenge system was broken last night. Reversed? Oh, a call is reversed, Terry. What do we know? The down ref has got a bit more angles to look at than we do. Oh, they're going to um. call the net. Yeah, they're going to call the net violation, which is not what was challenged. But of course, you can review any part of the play. And so, as you mentioned, Falcon into the net. And the score, 22-15. Hawaii in a perfect rotation here. Alexander to serve. IGD, Lang, and Gershing across the front row. Falcon. Back row, Alexander. Wow, what a good dig to get it back over on one. But a little bit too much height over Bullis, who stands 5'11", and Paula Gershing's 12th kill stretches the run to 4-0. Hawaii stretching their dominance looks to move to 45 and nine all time against Cal Poly. Something to notice, Daniel, up on the left hand side of your screen, Coach Amo will sometimes just point to who she wants the ball to go to on the set. Ooh. Meanwhile, Stockham runs over a few chairs here on the near side. Explain that to me, what do you mean? Coach Amo is just trying to give her, set her Kate laying a little bit of guidance out on the court, not necessarily verbally, but just Hand gestures pointing to who she wants that ball set to. We saw Kaylin Alexander attack that D ball very aggressively. Coach Amo pointed that one out to her setter, Kate Lang. Match point for Hawaii, and Nigidi is blocked. Nigidi with 16 kills but seven errors tonight. And Ella Scott will look for a all-time service run to see if this match extends. Eight more match points. It's Gershing. Markovska will tip. Out of system, back to Gershing. Oh, an awkward touch there by Slack, but it's sent over on three. It's IGD. Wow, what a dig by Akima. Markovska airmails it. And Hawaii wins it in four. 25-18, 22-25, 25-21, and 25-16. The Rainbow Wahine will move to six and two, stay on the road and take on Davis Tuesday night. Cal Poly falls to five and three, and we'll head to CSUN on Thursday. Final thoughts, Harry? Great match, Daniel, back and forth. Hawaii kind of dominated that first set but Cal Poly was sure to come back as we've seen them do all season. That second set was a thriller. The third and fourth sets both very competitive on both sides, but the difference was Amber Igedi 
she took over the match. 15 kills on 30 swings out of the middle, 333, two assists, seven digs to go along with it. Not many middles in the country are putting in seven digs on a nightly basis. Amber Igidi is the X factor for Hawaii tonight. And for the fourth time in the last five tries, Hawaii edges out Cal Poly. Markovska leads the way for Cal Poly with the 14 kills. And two or three different Hawaii players wind up with double-digit efforts offensively. Well, we wrap things up here from San Luis Obispo, and thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday night. For our entire crew, and Harry Kasif, I'm Daniel Gilman, wishing you a good night, reminding you that all broadcasts airing on the ESPN app are live and available on demand on the ESPN platforms. This has been a presentation of ESPN.